Welcome to our online service. In one week, we will be celebrating Palm Sunday. That's on March the 28th. And during Holy Week, we will have an online service of Tannenbrock. And this will be on Thursday, April the 1st. This service is based on a 12th century, late night, early morning service, and is an extended meditation on the Passion of Christ. This service will be available and uploaded to our Facebook and YouTube sites. And it will be available that evening at 7 p.m. We look forward to having you worship with us as we celebrate Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday and prepare during Holy Week for our Easter celebration. Whether you plan to worship in person, in home groups with friends and family, or are sharing the worship service online together, we are so happy to have you join us. Together we come to worship an amazing God, Let's worship and give praise to our Lord and Savior. Amen. Good morning and welcome to the fifth Sunday in Lent. Please join me in the call to worship. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of honor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The, the Lord, Lord is gracious, gracious and, and merciful. merciful. The opening hymn this morning is All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name.
Please join me in the opening prayer. Gracious and holy God, give us diligence to seek you, wisdom to perceive you, and patience to wait for you. Grant us, O God, a mind to meditate on you, eyes to behold you, ears to listen for your word, a heart to love you, and a life to proclaim you. Through the power of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The first lesson comes from Psalm 121, verses 1 through 8. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you for your generosity and faithful giving. We are blessed because of you to continue to support our missionaries and local communities. Let us recognize our Lord and Savior with joy in our hearts. As the Lord speaks to your heart today, we ask that you consider mailing your gifts, tithes, and offerings so that we are able to continue to be the hands and the feet of Christ in our community, nation, and around the world.
Lord, we pray that you bless these gifts. Bless the giver as well. Use these gifts in a bold and mighty way to continue to grow your kingdom. We lift them up before you. In Jesus' precious name, amen.
Our gospel lesson today is taken from the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. As for you, you are dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning and we ask, Lord, that you open our minds and our hearts to your word. Lord, may you receive the honor, glory, and praise in all that we do. I pray this now in Jesus' precious name. Amen. This is the fifth week of a six-week series titled Lent. Remembrance, Repentance, Renewal. Lent has traditionally been a time for Christians to reflect on the suffering of Christ and to unite themselves to him in their own suffering. This series has allowed us to reflect on the weight of sin, death, and darkness in the world, while also bringing out the beautiful resolution offered in the hope of the gospel. In our message this week, we will see that God transforms Christians from death to life through the power of Jesus Christ. Our challenge this week is, will we do good works out of enormous gratitude for God's salvation granted to us through Jesus Christ? So while Lent is a time to prepare for Christ, it is good to step back and have a time of honest reflection. Do you struggle to accept there is nothing you can do to make yourself right with God? That your right standing with him, the gift of his grace towards you, and your eternal salvation are free gifts, completely outside of your control. There is nothing that, that you and I can do to earn salvation. This is God's grace given to us. The Reverend Billy Graham once wrote that grace is not bought. It is a free gift of Almighty God to needy mankind. He said, when I picture Jesus Christ dying on the cross, I see the free gift of God's grace in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. He said, I sing with the songwriter, amazing grace, how sweet the sound 
that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. Reverend Graham also added that your human mind, with its philosophy of an equal return for favors done, can hardly comprehend the full meaning of, well, this grace of God. So, it is also worth reflecting that the grace God gives us is not just something we receive on Easter, but every day, all day. The unmerited grace of God are evident in our lives. I believe another thing we should reflect on during Lent is to remember that Jesus did not come to earth so that we could stay where we are at. It is a time to reflect deeply on our own mission for God. What are we doing to build the kingdom? How are we letting God use us to spread the gospel of his grace? The grace that God gives, as the Apostle Paul states, is not given in vain. I want us to, to, to look at the example from the Apostle Paul found in our scripture reading today in the book of Ephesians. In the first few chapters of the book of Ephesians, well, the Apostle Paul has prayed that his Christian readers might know the greatness of God's power towards them. And then praised God for exercising that same mighty power in raising Christ from the dead and exalting him to be head over all things for the church. In the first few verses of our scripture reading today, he now reminds all the people of the mighty change that had been affected in their lives. They were, well, spiritually dead. But out of God's great kindness and mercy, God has raised and exalted them with Christ. The passage in Ephesians call us to contemplate God's great love for us in spite of our wrongdoings, our, our, our sinful natures. Theologian Klein Snodgrass, in his commentary on the book of Ephesians, asked this question. Does God really love us so deeply, and are we actually exalted with Christ in the heavenly realms? Well, Klein goes on to answer this question by adding that the passage is about it's about value and hope. He says, without God, humanity has little or either. With God, humanity is given immense hope and lasting value. This hope and assurance is salvation. This is God's way of providing all of his people deliverance from sin and spiritual death through repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. So salvation is entirely of God. So are the good works that follow salvation. God has ordained the entire process. We cannot claim any glory, any credit for ourselves in our initial salvation. Even so, we cannot claim any, well, any glory or credit in our, well, subsequent good works. God is behind the entirety of our salvation from the very beginning to the very end. God's word tells us in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. 
It is a gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. So let us be reminded that God gets all the glory. So salvation leads and results in a life of good works. Now this is important to note because Christianity is a, it's a, it's a religion of participation, of involvement and fellowship with God in Christ. We come to, to God by faith, and the Holy Spirit causes that union with Jesus Christ. God's word affirms this in 1 Corinthians 12, 13. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body. Now, God's word affirms that salvation leads us in a life of good works. Listen to these words in Ephesians 2.10. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Now I'm sure most, if not all of you, would agree that this past year has been quite challenging. Some have had loved ones and friends pass away due to the virus and other illnesses. Some have, have struggled financially and emotionally. I spoke with a pastor friend of mine who shared with me that someone had asked this question. Where is God in all this? He said that he asked the, the person where do you believe God is? And within a few moments, the person put their head down and began to cry, began to weep. The pastor told him that God never left and will always be there in the best and worst of times. What the apostle Paul wrote through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, this Jesus is victorious, and that his victory, not the human plight, determines who we are. Jesus is Lord of all. Now, salvation results in a life of good works. We are not saved by good works but we are saved for good works. And I want to repeat this. We are not saved by good works, but we are saved for good works. Good works are the evidence, the fruit of salvation, not the cause of it. So what are some examples of these good works for which we were created? Now I did some research and I found that theologian Charles Spurgeon summarizes them as one, works of obedience, works of love, works of faith, and acts of common life. And he explains it this way. By works of obedience, he means obeying the commands of Scripture, opening up the Bible and studying it and learning it. Works of love includes both love for God and love for humanity, love for neighbor with an eye to God's glory. He said works of faith refers to all that we do in reliance upon God and his promises. By acts of common life, he meant whatever we do at home, at work, traveling, even if we're ill, that we do all to the glory of God. He concludes and he says, in other words, we should live with a Godward focus to please him. Salvation involves a new creation that is enti entirely God's doing. This new creation is made 
for good works. So, will we do good works out of enormous gratitude for God's salvation granted to us through Jesus Christ? So what does this message tell us and what can we apply in our everyday lives? I think it's a great question. I believe that the message should move us to action to worship with open hearts, with gratitude and praise to God, to, to read God's word and to share it with all those that we encounter, to use the gifts God has given us to serve and grow his kingdom. There are many ways of serving here at Chickie's Church. If you have a heart for children, we invite you to connect with our children's ministry. If you have a gift in the area of finance, connect with our finance team. And if your gift is in prayer, connect with our prayer partners. This is just to name a few. I ask you to prayerfully consider connecting with any of these ministries or others to use the gifts God has given you to serve. The season of Lent helps us reflect on who we are, our identity. From knowing who we are, we know how to live. Without God, we are lost. With God, we are found in Christ. I believe we will do good works out of enormous gratitude for God's salvation granted to us through Jesus Christ. Amen. Each week, we invite you to accept the free gift of Jesus Christ. We also invite those who feel in their heart to reaffirm their faith as well. God sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. After three days in the tomb, Jesus rose from the dead and declared victory over death. If you believe this and have accepted the gift of eternal life through faith in your heart, this is God's invitation for you today. His gift to all. If you're drawn by the Holy Spirit to accept this gift, to reaffirm your faith, I ask that you join with me now in prayer. Heavenly Father, forgive me. I turn towards you so I may be whole. I accept this free gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Amen. If you have accepted this free gift, praise God. Let someone know. Let us know so that we can send you some resources, and walk beside you on your faith journey. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Heavenly Father, hear our prayers. Thank you, Lord, for the reminder of renewal that spring represents to us in the earth. You sprang forth a new thing. Lord, prepare us for all the new and wonderful things you have for our lives. Help us to let go of all the old things that hold us back, the things that do not bring us life, the things that keep us living in the past. Lord, help us to keep springing forward in our journey with you. Lord, today we lift up in our spoken prayers for Susie, Betty, Martha, Harry, Bob, Norm, CJ, Jake, Julie, Shirley, Larry, Rick, Joni, Jerry, Linda, Jed, Gloria, Ben, Lori, Sharon, 
Regina, Jack, Will, Sue, Bob, Don, and Eleanor. Lord, you know what they need. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, we bring you our unspoken prayers now. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for our nation. May you heal our land. Lord, we continue to pray for an end to this virus, that you will heal the world in its grips. Lord, be with those families who have been impacted by the violent storm system that swept through the Southeast. We continue to pray for all who have lost loved ones during this time. May you bring them comfort. We ask that you strengthen and heal those who are currently battling this virus and other illnesses. We pray for our first responders, medical workers, essential workers, and support staff. We also pray for our military. We ask that you place a hedge of protection around them and their families. We pray for all the students, the parents, teachers, administrators, and school bus drivers. We pray for Chickie's Church and the many churches in our local community and throughout the world. May your light shine through the church. Lord, we praise you and we thank you for all that you have done and ask of these things in the name of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Our worship service is over. His service begins. Take care and God bless. <laughs>